Uh, welcome to this episode of Your Black World News. I'm your host, Roosevelt Mitchell III. Today I'm joined by Mrs. Sherrianna Mimi, whose daughter, a six-year-old, was handcuffed for allegedly disrupting class. How's it going today, Miss Mimi? I'm fine, how are you? Uh, I'm great. I thank you so much for taking time to speak with me about this because as today we are seeing so many things happen to black children in the educational system, I think it's very, very important for parents to speak out about things like this, especially handcuffs and traumatizing our babies at three, four, five, and six years old, specifically. But can you tell us a little bit about what happened to your daughter and what she was supposedly had done that was so horrific that the school officer or school resource officer handcuffed her? Well, is is nothing to justify why she was handcuffed because that's is nothing she could have done for you to put handcuffs on her in the first place being that you know you're educators you y'all got timeout systems y'all got other methods of ways of dealing with children so it's nothing she could have done in the first place that i felt that's justified for her to put you know the educators are doing everything but educating our teach children nowadays but my daughter had an incident, like, I think, where her piece of paper had fell on the floor and another student picked up the paper and put the paper in the trash and it was a piece of paper that she was trying to keep. And so I guess her and the student got into an altercation where the other student tripped over the trash can, caused a disruption in the classroom where the teacher had to ask her to go to the principal's office. And from that point on, I'm getting two sides of the story. The adult is telling me one thing, and my daughter is telling me another thing. Oh, okay, let's start with what are the adults telling you? Okay, supposedly, okay, from the adult side, after the, the, the paper was placed in a trash can, she pushed the student, fell over the trash can, and not both were sent to the administrator, but only my child was sent to the administrator. She's supposed to took off running from the administrator where they she was they were they had to chase her down to administrators the PE uh, the PE coach and the actual school administrator cuz I think each grade level has their own administrator that they go to so it was the PE coach for intimidation and then it was her actual person that can write her up and she's supposed to ran away from there where they had to chase her down while stepping or tripping on her shoelace that she fell and the teacher or the administrator fell and they took her yeah she stepped actually in her shoe you're right that's exactly what she said because I, I have the audio to prove what I'm saying she stepped she actually stepped on her shoelace because her shoes was untied to stop her like you know, pro, you know, to prevent so her from the continuing to The administrator stepped on your daughter's shoelace, shoelace. to stop she her and trip her. Baby up, she tripped her up to stop her from running away from her. Wow. If that's what I'm just telling you, what they told me, and from that point on, they was able to take her into the office, close, close, close her into a, a close the door, and stand over her and try to get her to behave. In the midst of that, she's supposed to have been trying to hurt herself on the ledge is why they called the Cobb County School Police for backup. She... So, the PE coach and the person who was writing her up, uh, after they tripped her, they took her inside the office and they still needed the police for, for backup for a six-year-old? Well, between, between that time that... uh. They went into the office. They uh, supposed to have wedged a chair at the door so no one could get in. In the process of them waiting for Cobb County to, uh, I guess the the, the secure, the, you know, the administrators of the, the campus police to come. When the campus police came, I guess they automatically just put the handcuffs on her with no question of what she did. When they asked her what had happened, the, the school had supposed to told the campus police that she was trying to harm herself. 
from which they told us that she was trying to hit her head on the window ledge somewhere in the process of her running and trying to get away from them. So when but they had her closed in the office. They had the door closed and the chair in front of the door. And it's supposed to be the PE coach and the administrator. And in between that, she's supposed to be trying to hurt herself on the window ledge. Is which why they had to lock her in the door or have to have to basically close her in the room is yeah. what they claiming. Right. And so they, they didn't claim they locked her in the room. Why they called the police? So they right. So they claim they locked her in the room for her own safety and called the police. But when the police got there, all of a sudden that room wasn't enough safety, so they handcuffed her. Is that right? Correct. And on 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 somewhat correct because we don't know because. What this is what they're telling us. Uh, after a week of trying to get in contact with them, the, the, the previous week, the Friday, um, previous to it happening, something else had happened. They said um, the same administrator supposed to had, um, uh, I guess, bump knees with uh, Isaiana. But they didn't tell her tell us this until we was in a meeting because when I when I cross asked them who who uh, tied her shoelaces because we double knot our daughter's shoelaces every morning before she goes to school because she comes out of them walking and running and things of that nature so we double knot them so when she came home previous to that her shoes was double knotted so when we, when we were in the in the meeting I asked them who double knotted her shoes. And she said, I did. And what my point was to that was, she said that something happened that Friday before, which they didn't tell us, that someone supposed to have failed and they got into some, some type of altercation to where she had to um, t tie her shoelaces up because they got, she was trying to run away or do something again. They was trying to take her to the office and they couldn't take her to the office and the teacher's supposed to hurt herself and my daughter's supposed to, they both fell on the ground and they both supposed to hurt their knee. But none of this was reported to after I asked, why wasn't, her, why didn't she come home with her shoes double knotted like she, she went to school with? Because when we're in the meeting now, now they're stating that this that incident never happened, but when we're when we're merging the both of the incidents, we're asking, well, why didn't you tell us about this previous incident instead of just saying that this incident happened and now she's running wild up the hallway and you guys have to chase her down and have to just basically seclude her in an area with no adult but a, a, a PE teacher and a teacher and nowhere in this in, in the time do you consider calling the parents at no time. And but, then then, allowed, but in between uh, that time, they, in between of all of that, somehow, some way, they got control of the situation to calm her down to color a picture for me, for, for her to give to me when I got there. So was that before they handcuffed her or after? We, we don't even know. I'm not, we're not even sure. I'm not even sure. Because when, I, when, when, when they called me, when they finally called me, and I got up there, they was replacing the handcuffs off of her. And she was crying. And at that point in time, it was like, it's irrelevant what she did. It's irrelevant what she did. Y'all got handcuffs on my daughter. I don't care about no suspension papers. I don't care about what happened. This is ridiculous. How you call the police before you call her mom and dad? So you you sent me over the uh, incident report and she was charged or uh, was charged with like three or four charges, correct? Supposedly, supposedly, no charges, no so, charges don't go to my baby. So what, That's so, not gonna stick. So what ended up happening is we are destruction um, of the tr destruction of school property, the trash can that the other student fell over, destruction on a, a, a police officer because she didn't sit there and allow them to handcuff her. The officers, she wanted and to press charges because she said that uh, our daughter pinched her when she was trying to put the handcuffs wait, on. Wait, 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 wait. So they locked the dog in the room, put a chair on the door, called the police, and when the police get there trying to put the handcuffs on, they said your daughter pinched her, so now the police is pressing charges against your daughter. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and 
So what we did like is... Like I told what, the officer, please press charges on somebody that can stick. Because we can go out here right now and I can give you I can give you more charges. We can go press more charges. So... And then, he, then the officer, she's so, she so fucking, excuse me, like, she's so disrespectful. When we finally have this meeting, because I did, they suspended her for about eight days. When we finally have the meeting, which is the next week after, she's supposed to be back in school. But I don't feel like it's secure enough, and my daughter was scared to go back to school. I didn't feel like it was okay to allow her to go back to school. Until I got the to talk to somebody. Somebody got to tell me something. So your daughter was scared to go back to school? My daughter is, it's days, it, it, it's mornings that I have to, we have to wake up and we have to do the pep talk. Come on, Zaza, we're going to have a great day. We're going to be good girl. We're going to have a good day. We're going to, everything is going to be okay. Just go to school. Just be good. I mean, it's days that we actually have to do the pep talk. My daughter don't feel safe at her own school. How does the people that's supposed to be there to, to make you feel safe and protect you and to teach you is the same ones that got you jumping out your sleep in the middle of the night or scared or terrified. She's not comfortable there. Wow. Wow. One morning she missed the bus. I had to take her to school. When I, it's a long line. I was waiting in the line and she said, Ma, can you walk me in? And yeah, I looked at her because I actually I didn't actually want to go through all of that, you know, having to walk in and this sign her in. This was a morning that I, I didn't even feel like I wanted her to go to school anyway. Let me just say that because it was it was a Friday and she woke up and uh, I was getting her ready and she just she just it just looked to me like she didn't I didn't I didn't need to we didn't need to send her off to school. So so she, not only not only is this affecting your daughter and has her. You know, waking up in the middle of the night with bad dreams and scared to go to school, but it's also affecting, you know, both of you, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, I, I lost my job over the incident because I went to I went to work uh, basically with it on my shoulders and just trying to go about my day and uh, I, I basically I got let go because of the situation because I I mean all my all my coworkers knew of it and you know they. Basically, just was you know letting me do what I do, and we we working together. But the management, they didn't know of the situation. So when they, when all my coworkers basically told them what was going on, it was it was basically too late, and they was kind of like like well, we didn't know. And I was trying to keep it you know under wraps, but my wife called me while it was going on. So while she's going to the school, I'm hearing this, and I'm I'm on the clock. So it was like. I, I basically, it, it, I, I had, I mean, I kept it, I tried to keep it cool, but I, I basically, I really couldn't, and, and right. my, my job really didn't understand until later on when, like I said, my coworkers told them what I had going on. So, so uh, but this definitely affects me because when you know your daughter is very smart, or she has the potential, but she goes somewhere and she's scared to raise her hand or she's scared to do or to show her abilities, that, that's a problem. So, it's a problem for me as a as a mother to to allow somebody to do something like that to your child, and you can't protect your own child. Yeah, I'm telling you everything is okay, but I'm not with you at school every day. So where where's the situation at now? Oh, the school act like everything everything never happened. She is just. God sent to, to the school and, and she's just so precious and, and and let's just let's not discuss. Now and, and then now it's like, okay, well, every day they was it was seeming like they was nitpicking. They was suspending her for little stuff. She was on the playground and she threw dirt. Suspension. Every little thing they was suspending was her. Was this suspension. afterwards? Um, was this after the situation? It, 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 it led up to the situation and it still follows after the situation. Okay. It, it, it led up to the point that I got a letter in the mail saying something about after so many absences, they would charge me a fine or charge me a misdemeanor after so many amount of absences. But she ain't never been absent other than the days that y'all suspended her.
or the situation. And like I was trying to tell you, I when I took her to the school to drop her off, usually I just, you know, drive by in the car line and, you know, they, they open up your door and they pull your baby out. They say hi, bro, have a great day. And that's what I was going to do. But she asked me to walk her in. When I parked the car, I realized that the officer was standing right there, and that's why she asked me to walk her in. I had to stand there at the door, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, Sasa, you gonna be okay? You you all right? It's okay. Shake it off. Let, let's go to school. Let's go to learn. We gonna be a smart girl. We gotta be a smart girl. Don't let people stop you from being smart. You know, I gotta encourage her, like, you know what I'm saying? She's not gonna do anything to you, like, and that's a problem. That is a problem. And this lady is, is is glorified. Like, she can't do no wrong. So is this the same officer who was... Uh, to her who, superiors. Is this the same officer who pressing charges against her daughter? Yeah. Well, ultimately, ultimately what happened was we went to the actual uh, campus police department to talk to her superior. And we, had, we also have an audio meeting with that also. And they gave us the runaround. We end up, they end up... Because uh, we went up there to try to They uh, end up file. sidestepping us from not, you know, filing an actual report. But we, we talked to her superior, and we had about a, a hour, hour and a half discussion Recording about the whole, the whole About me trying to file a complaint. And that's basically and what we went down there for. When I check, when I called back up there to check on the complaint that I went up there to go do with both of her superiors... Because he said he was the one that gave the okay to put the handcuffs on the child. But the only reason he gave the okay was because they said that the child was trying to hurt herself. Meaning the school relayed the message to the, uh, well, the, the campus, the actual officer called in to her superior and told him that, I guess, our daughter was trying to harm herself, which he gave the okay to put handcuffs on her, in which we also acknowledge that if that was the case, then okay. If our daughter was trying to harm herself, that would be okay on everyone's to be in a safe area to put handcuffs on her. But this is what he said and what they're telling us because this meeting was before we actually went to the school. So we didn't have this knowledge of them putting the handcuffs on her without the police and them getting the okay. So he's saying he got the okay. They put the handcuffs on her. Now we asking why did you put the handcuff or why did you give the okay? And he said because they said that she was trying to harm herself. So we was we we understood that if a child is trying to harm herself in everyone's best interest in the safety of the child, we're gonna handcuff her. We agreed to that. Now, this is the meeting. When we went to the school a whole week later, because we went to, to the campus police one week, and we didn't get a chance to actually have a meeting with the actual school and about the incident a it whole a week later. To talk to us. We, through Monday through Friday, my wife went to the school. She requested the audio. She requested to have a meeting with the principal. Have, 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 have this multiple... Uh, phone conversations and, and going up there with with her mother, my mother-in-law, trying to I even set up for meetings. A counselor to talk every, to my child. Through the, they from, handcuffed from the her through the meeting. We didn't. We never spoke. She never spoke to anyone. She was just. She was trying. For a she, week. They they even went as far as to say that she was she was sick a day or two. She was in a meeting and she won't be able to be coming. Yeah, they gave us the runaround for a whole week. So when we went, oh, sorry, so what was go ahead. the outcome of that meeting? Finally, after you, after you all finally met, I mean, what was the outcome? Right. We went to the meeting. Now that's the audio that you guys have. And we. Well, the outcome is the officer being the disrespectful. Office, the officer, and she said off. she felt right, and she felt that she she didn't do anything wrong. She felt like she, you know, she took time out of her schedule, you know, to come and do this because this is in a courtroom, and she didn't have to do this. And all what, of this led up to we, being disrespected still we, by the officer. What, what we what we went in was trying to figure out what happened. So when we what we have now is that the campus police told us that 
the school said that she was trying to harm herself. So we have this knowledge. We go into there and hoping, the to hear, hoping, say, to, hoping to hear this. They never the said too. nothing like that. So and that never happened. So the school says that, like the audio, she's, she's, she, they was trying to run up the hall. She's supposed to have tripped and she's supposed to have been trying to hit her head. No mention of the of, window or nothing. Of some, just some degree of she was trying to harm herself. So I asked, well, why did you relay the message to the school, to the campus police that she was trying to harm herself? So now we have two different stories. And then even on that same audio, I asked the, 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 the superior, the officer superior, okay, so now that you got them stuttering and lying on them, would you, okay, would you still would have gave the okay for them to put the handcuffs on her? He, he, he couldn't even say nothing. She, the officer gets so mad and she's so disrespected. I don't know what nobody did to her. I don't know why she's so mad, but she's so right and she feel like she's so right. She get up from the meeting and she walk away. You all are based in Atlanta and I have a friend who's a lawyer in Atlanta and also the uh, vice president of the NAACP. So uh, I'm definitely going to shoot this video over to him to see exactly is there, uh, you know, if there is anything that can be done, I mean, as far as on the legal aspect, but I thank you all so much for your time. We'd just like to say thank you for allowing us to at least just get this story out to where someone, you know, can even, if not help us, then, you know, help someone to, you know, prevent it to happen to someone else, man, because as, as parents and, and being in, you know, a society where it's not only handcuffing and shooting of children is, you know, we got so much going on with us right now, man. It's unite, uniting is possibly not even the answer right now, man, because even when it's all together, we ain't got no plan, and it, it ain't going to add up to nothing. So, I mean, right. I know we're going to do something. So, I again, thank you again, brother. All right. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this segment of Your Black World News, and until next time, my friends, be blessed and be encouraged.